What's up, guys? We're back for another episode of the Creative Blockman podcast. And on today's episode, we have one of my, well, yeah, one, you could say one, because there's a few. I have quite a few like favorite artists, but we have one of my favorite South African artists and favorite artists in general. Um, as I said in my episode that I made about him as a multi-talented South African artist, takes beautiful photos, beautiful paintings, you name it. Um, you could say he's a style icon. I'd call him a style <laughs> icon. He inspires me, at least. Um, and it's none other than the great Justice Mukeli. So, Good. how's it, dude? I mean, Good, we're man. here. Like, finally, thank damn. Thank you for the incredible intro. I, I tried. I tried. <laughs> yeah, we're here. Thanks, man. We've been talking about this for a while. I'm glad we're doing it finally. Yeah, me too. We can talk about a lot of things. Yeah, I don't know what your questions are, but yeah. Don't worry, nothing hectic. <laughs> yeah. Um, once again, thank you as well. Um, it's like I said to you, like I really do appreciate this. Yeah. You know, you taking time out of your day. Yeah. Um, it means a lot to me because this is something that's important for me. I really enjoy doing this. Yeah. So thank you once again. And I guess let's get straight into it, guys. Um, and the first question that I really want to ask, and I ask all my guests, yeah. what was your like first experience with art? When did you like first experience ah, art? That's a good question. My first experience with art was through my dad. I think I must have been six. It was like, when do kids start school? Like when Yeah, six, yeah, around, around six, six, seven, six, yeah. Six, yeah, I think I was around six because it was my first time in primary school. And we came back home and we were hanging out with my dad. Um... And we were hanging out with my dad because he loved playing jazz for us. And I assume it was uh, during the weekend, like on a Saturday afternoon. He was probably having whiskey and we were sitting with him in the lounge. He was playing jazz and it was Blue Note. Then nice. my brother and I sat beside him and he started drawing on a cassette tape. And when he was done drawing, and it was the first time seeing him draw, when I looked at it, it was a drawing of him and the both of us next to him holding the record that oh, he damn. was playing for us. And, That's and crazy. when I saw that, I thought, this is amazing. My dad can do this. I can do this. You know, so just seeing that sparked get my, my, my mindset that, you know, I may not be good at the other stuff, but this, I'm going to ah. be better than anyone in my class because my dad can do it, you know, so... It, that was my first encounter with art, and that was the seed that sparked it. Okay, damn, yeah. that's really cool. Like, that's uh, it's such a. I think it's also such a like, it's like sweet story. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's also it's like a really like it's a beautiful story. Like, it's it's yeah. cool to experience that, um, and it's cool that your dad could plant that seed in you. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's really special. I don't even um, think it was intentional, hey. Yeah, but probably not. If you think about also, it, also more so because. I've never seen him do that thereafter. That was the only moment of him doing that. And we never spoke about art again. We've never, I've never asked him anything about art. He's never done it. I mean, when we were kids, he'd see us do it, but I don't remember. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> you know, when you're young and you're in high school, grade eight, I started drawing. I went to a school called Langlachte. Oh, yes, in yeah. Grade eight, yeah. yeah. So because it was a departure from the world I come from and all the protection from family and church and all of that, I started seeing things like thug life, yeah, tags and, okay, cool, cool. and this yeah. and this. Then I was just sitting on a Saturday again with my dad playing jazz and I started drawing the things I saw during the week. Yeah, yeah. And I drew a guy not wearing a chest with thug life across his Nice. Tupac. <laughs> yeah. And my dad saw that and he got so worried. Yeah. That why am I doing that? You know, yeah, why is that inspiring yeah, you? Like, yeah, what yeah. are you doing during the week for yes. you to be drawing yeah, thug then, life on the weekends? Yeah, I was in trouble. But yeah, that's the other encounter with art. Okay. Which obviously wasn't so positive and he wasn't impressed with what I was yeah. doing. So. But I think it was, it, I think from your side, it was innocent. It wasn't like, no, you weren't going to, it's not like you were becoming a gangster. It's just and, what you were exposed to. And the twist is, 
I didn't even know what thug life meant. Exactly. So I mean, <laughs> I even worry if I spelled it right. Yeah. But I remember that memory that that's the thing I drew, and he got so worried and he questioned me, and he told my mom, and they said I must never do that. Yeah. And yeah, that's that. From yeah. then you're like yeah. no more thug life, <laughs> no more thug life. But then from there I got into graffiti. Okay, cool. Which my parents didn't understand, so they just yeah. thought, ah, oh, these guys. You know, like this thing, it's expensive, mm. but yeah, we were quite into it, and we made a small business of um, drawing lettering, like house numbers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In graffiti for people, so yeah. they pay us like hundred and fifty and whatever. So yeah, that's, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, that's really cool. Like, yeah. it's cool that you could think of it that way as well. Like, a, you already had kind of like a business mindset back then, which is which is important. I remember there was this. This little kid that he actually came to my business the one day and he yeah. wanted to write like we have like a blackboard and he wanted to write out the specials and stuff like that, like in his own way. And I was, I was like, okay, cool, you know, yeah, like do yeah. it and then like we'll yeah, see how yeah. it looks afterwards. Um, and he did it and it was, bro, like I literally have goosebumps. This kid was so what? good. Okay. So I was like, okay, come back again, yeah. and the next time I'm gonna pay you for it. Yeah. Um. That's amazing. He came back, he did it again, you know, I paid him for it as well. Um, yeah. And then I said to him, like I told him, uh, uh, like over time I said to him, like you're quite good at this, like you really, yeah. like it looks good. Natural, yeah. you, you have to like pay attention to that because you're good at it. Yeah. So I even said to him, I told him, I was like, listen, you've got to get like a little tag, like a little signature yeah. for, for your work yes. so that people can know it was you. Yeah. And then after that, I never saw him again. Oh, man. Never saw him again. I was so upset because he was young. I mean, Which neighborhood is he from? Uh, he, must, uh, he must be from... What's close to my business? I think he must either be from Simunye. Oh, okay. okay. Um, on the West Strand. That's sad, man. It was so sad, dude. He was really, really good. He was a young guy. Damn. He must have been nothing older than like 11. What? No jokes. I mean, he was small, man. He was like, he was, he was a small little kid. That's amazing. And for me, that was That's really a cool. Story, like, man. When, when you could think of art and put it yeah. in a business like aspect, because I don't yeah. like that thing of the whole idea of artists struggling. It shouldn't yeah. be, it shouldn't be a thing, yeah. which I understand in the beginning, like, you know, you have to grow your career. You have yeah. to, you have to build a name for yourself and stuff like that. Yeah. But I mean, that's also a story for another day. I said it yeah. in my one episode, like, it's like how we actually, I bought an art piece of yours. And yeah. for me, it was yeah. really important important that i bought it directly from you yes because and i understand the business and model this. Yeah, and we have this you know yeah. today we're sitting here yeah. we're doing this episode we have a relationship yeah. like a friendship yeah. you know yeah. so for me it's that yeah. for me that's the most important thing because i can i can walk into a gallery and i can have a relationship yeah. with the gallery the gallery and yeah. the, the curator of the whatever but it's not the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's you not know, the same. It's it's interesting you speak of that because I see it um it works uh, in different ways. Yeah. The, this is obviously amazing a connection to to an artist and a collector. Yeah. It's very important and it's amazing. But sometimes as artists the the galleries create opportunities mm. that we couldn't get to. Mm. True. As individuals and they create opportunities that uh, collectors couldn't get to True. as individuals. True. You know, so sometimes they become the bridge, even though sometimes maybe in inception it, it doesn't feel like um, there's direct connection between the collector and, and the artist. Mm. Maybe over time it happens. But yeah, I mean, yes, there is this which is great yeah but there's definitely merit and premise for for galleries because 100 percent yeah. opportunities that i couldn't get to without them you know yeah like for example i'm showing in germany right now and without that gallery had, had to have been interested in me and my work and um interested in showing my work to the collectors and the audience i wouldn't exist in that space True. Because as True. an individual, how far can you go? Mm. You know? True. So yeah, I mean, yeah, there's there's definitely it goes two ways. Yeah. I, I think for me what 
and and I don't hate galleries. I don't dislike yeah. galleries. Yeah. The first time I bought an art piece was from Arti. It was from uh, yeah. a gallery. It was actually I don't know if you know Mars, the graffiti artist. Bro. Yeah, I bought Bro. one of his pieces, dude. Is he still around? Yeah, no, but Mars incredible. is still there, dude. I love that guy. Like he's, his his work is insane. If I am not wrong, he used to tag Miser. Oh, is Miser a different person? No, no, I think it's different. He he tags Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris, okay. And Mars. Um, kick-ass. Mars dude, is kick-ass. Dude, yeah, even yeah. this piece that I bought, I, I don't want to digress, guys, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I get so excited when people ask no, me about this. I love this. graffiti, man. The, and the, just these pieces that he did that I bought, like yeah. it's a portrait of a woman. Yeah. Um, and he, he, he used stippling. Yeah, yeah. To do the amazing. portrait. Yeah, yeah. You must see it. It is so yeah, insane, I'd love dude. To see. Even the um because she's wearing a duck. So what he mm. did, he actually took material. Yeah. And he like he made, he made a duck out of it. Duke, and it's yeah. got like volume that's and all that shit. He's really, wow. really, really, oh, really, really cool. good. Dude. You bought it through a gallery? I bought it through Artai. Artai. Oh, yes, Artai, yeah. No, they no. used to be in close to what's that area called? Not Yovo. Like just down the road from Yovo, for yes. close to Ellis Park. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah they used uh, to be there. Um, yeah, I yeah, know the area. Yeah, yeah, I we, went, we both I, know the area. I've but been to a school in that area. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah, they used to be there. Now they moved to Four Ways. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Really cool gallery. Like, really I'll nice people. Yeah. Um, I think why I also, I had a bad, not a bad experience with mm. galleries, but I went to the more prominent and the bigger galleries mm. And I just didn't feel welcome. welcome. Yeah. I didn't feel welcome. There is that, man. To be honest, uh, um, you know, I'm relatively new in the space, in the art world and participating uh, with galleries. And I have felt that, you know, I have felt it, before I got into the space, I had the resistance mm. to participate within the space because I felt unwelcome. Yeah. Uh, I think it's because of... You know, maybe systematic behaviors mm. and stuff that a way of being in those businesses from back then. True. You know that yeah. I think galleries now should be quite intentional about dismantling that vibe and that 100%, energy and bro. that elitism. 100%. Art is for the people, by the people. Yeah. You know, as much as some value or some art has value that as everyday people we can't afford mm. we should at least be afforded the chance to enjoy be able it to enjoy it yeah. and walk into these big institutions and not feel looked down upon 100 percent. not you know 100%. not everyone comes into galleries to buy because we yeah. all can't afford not everyone can afford yeah. you know but i'd love to walk in there and see a samson nisi or you know all these yeah, teachers, exactly amazing artists and just appreciate because I don't have fifty grand to buy. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's yeah, like I mean, the one gallery I walked into, and it like it was very spur of the moment. It was a Sunday, and granted, like I, I wasn't like dressed like nicely or anything. I just yeah. had like a pair of flops on. You know, it's a yeah, Sunday. Yeah, I was yeah. chilling at home. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't planned. Yeah. And I walked in, yeah. the guy literally, and I'm. If my girlfriend was here, yeah. she would tell you the guy. And we walked in, both of us. Yeah. He looked at us looked back down and carried on on his laptop. And I was like, for me, that's just like, I grew up when, when, you, when you see somebody, when you meet somebody yeah, for the first time, you, you greet them, you know? It's yeah, a le yeah, yeah. The least you can do yeah. is greet them, say, hi, how are you? Yeah. Especially if it's in like a business, like, do you yeah. need any help? Are you okay? Yeah. If you need yeah. anything, I'm here. let me know, whatever, I'm here, you yeah. know? Like, yeah, he looked at me, carried on. I look, went through the gallery. I don't want to say the name of the gallery, yeah, yeah. but no, went know. through there and I left and I was like, you know what? What if I did buy a piece today? Yeah. What if I was actually, what if I was looking for, looking to buy a piece today? I wouldn't yeah. have bought it because of that experience. How you were received. Yeah. And that's when <clears throat> I didn't buy, I didn't buy for a long time. I went into a lot of galleries and I didn't buy for a long time. And then when I went into Artai for the first time, I was nervous, obviously. Yeah, from um, past experience. Yeah, from past experience, I was nervous. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, let's see how this goes. Walked in. Uh, and obviously you're very like rookie. Like she yeah. asked me, do you need any help or anything? We're like, nah, we're just here to look, you know? And yeah. She was like super chill. She was like, okay, cool. cool. You guys want a coffee? If there's anything you need, just like I'm let right here, know. you know, let me know. Yeah. And I was like, 
Okay, cool. Like she yeah. bought the coffee, yeah. and then we just started speaking. Naturally, we yeah. started speaking. She was friendly, and then that day I was like, okay, this is. The I found the place. Like yeah. this is where I'm gonna buy my first I piece of check art. Them out. You should very, very I'll like very cool out. gallery. Um, very nice people. For me, that's the that was the biggest thing. Just the interaction that I got with them. Yeah. Uh, I didn't walk in that day. I made sure I dressed nicely, though. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> they need to make sure that I, you yeah, know, <laughs> maybe that's what it was. I was like, I made sure. I was like, let me work. Let but, me wear my Sunday clothes. Mm, but speak of that, bro. I think owners of those institutions most of the time are not that stuck up. Probably it's not. The, yeah, it's the employees. Yeah. You know, having mm. probably being a business owner, you have had, uh, you know, maybe issues, depending, I don't know. But yeah. sometimes your staff don't always represent you 100%. the way you want to be represented. 100%. Because mm. they also have their own... Yeah, egos. Egos yeah. and views. Like and I tell all my staff members, like, leave your ego at the door. Yeah. Because man. when I, w I... To this day, you can walk into my business, I will yeah. be behind the till... Yeah. packing customers bag and thanking every single one yes. because i know without that person coming here we don't exist i don't have money at the end of the month yes. i don't have yeah. anything and at the end of the day i hate walking into the store and they like give me terrible service yeah because regardless of how much money you're spending i feel you should get the you same service respected you should that's the one thing i take out of my life like i don't care who you are whether you're yeah car guard or a trolley porter matter, yeah. you respect the person the same way you know so for me that was that's really important for me like I, i'm that type of person where if yeah. i walk into a place whether i'm going to spend money or not just yeah. respect me as a human being yeah, yeah you know what yeah. i mean like you're a human being you want to be respected Simple. i'm a human being i want to be respected Simple, cool yeah. we, we're both on the same page but anyway yeah. um let's move on to the next question sure um so now obviously you've been in the the art scene for a long time. Yeah. Different roles, yes. you know, directing films, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. What is the biggest, let's say two things, what is the biggest miscon misconception mm. and what have you learned the most? Like in terms of, I said it with Jed the other day, like mm. um, it was a guy, a friend of mine on the podcast, yeah. um, I asked him like, you know, for example, like people not paying you for a gig because he's a beatbox and a rapper. Yeah. So is there anything like, you've experienced in that side the, type of sense? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> the first question was, what's the... Biggest misconception, so like, the yeah. The biggest misconception is that because we are artists and we work in the art industry, people think that it's fun. We are having yeah. fun, you, you know. You just get to direct this amazing f um, ad or film. You know, you just get to wake up and go paint or you just go make photographs. Yeah, there's no work. Yeah, there's no work. It, that's the biggest misconception. And I think a lot of younger people or just people look at the end product of mm. what we create as creatives and yeah. think being a creative is just that. You know, I think people need to realize that it is an industry. Yes. And industries have systems. Mm. Industries have a way of working. Yeah. For you to participate in the industry and be able to make a, a, a way of living, mm. you know? Um, so if I speak of being a painter, it's incredibly hard. It's not easy, you know? Because as much as it feels and looks like I determine my time, what I want to paint, how I want to paint it, and all those things, and it's not always that. Yeah. Because I need to package myself. I need to create work that reaches a certain level or mm. criteria. I need to um, create a body of work. I need to have narrative behind the. There's yeah. a, there are lots of contributions. There's a factors. story behind each painting. Each painting, you know? right? And there's a way um, of being. Mm. You know, there's a way of participating and putting yourself out in front of the opportunities you seek, you know. Yeah. I don't just, I don't always just get to paint and be invited for a show at a car in Paris or... No, Legos, <laughs> how does that know? happen? <laughs> by just chilling. It's a huge tap dance. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's yeah. a huge tap dance by creating the work, by 
being thoughtful, by being conceptual. It's a lot, mm. right? So as being a photographer in the in the industry, you know, so as being a filmmaker in the yeah. industry, it it's a it's an industry. There is a way things are done. Like being a film director is the hardest artistic mm. craft I can I've imagine. ever worked in. It's the hardest because all art you are at the mercy of other people's opinions right 100%. but with being a film director you have to create based on a brief mm. and within that brief you need to find your creativity yeah so that it's creatively satisfying yeah then there's the tap dance of you know clients there's mm. the tap dance of you know no we didn't see it this way we wanted this way it's a lot yeah revisions and, and yeah <laughs> and and it's a huge ecosystem that you need to work through it's big it's a big collaborative effort you can't do anything by yourself yeah. so yeah th- that's the big misconception that people think that uh you will it's just fun yeah you'll just chill it's a lot of work no, i it think is. it's even harder than being in corporate because uh being an artist doesn't require you to have had an honors and this and this mm. then you are guaranteed to be successful mm. being an artist doesn't work that way yeah. you are at the mercy of other people's opinions 100% right then the second one the uh can I, in- can I interrupt you one yeah, second sure. yeah, yeah. um i remember with a lot of your like your instagram stories and stuff like that people don't realize or maybe they do now thanks to social media yeah people don't realize that sometimes call time is like four four in the morning bro And five in the morning. If call time is four <laughs> in the morning, we are in Pakistan. If call time is four in the morning, in the West Rand, first of all, what time do I have to wake up? Yeah. To be ready yeah. to leave the house 30 yeah. minutes before. To be ready to leave the house at 3.30. Yeah. So I need to be up at three. At three. Or quarter, quarter to three. To three. Exactly. That's what a lot of people don't see. And I think the biggest thing is, yeah. with, the, with being in the corporate industry as well, is there's a structure to it. Yes, you know they they know like I have to be at work at nine. We're gonna do this, this, this. And five, got, I leave. You've got you've got um, a salary. Yes, with this an salary, artist. No salary. With an artist, you have to no work, create no your salary. You have to create. You know, your salary. and some months you might sell four pieces. Some months. The next you month not. you might not sell anything. And you might not sell for eight months. You might not shoot an ad for a year. Yeah, and then what? Then what do you do? Then there's then, then it's not just fun because yes, parts of your job I can imagine are fun, obviously. Yeah, yeah but it is fun. There are, but it's not only that. No, it's not only fun. It's not it's uh, actually the not fun a rock star. Is maybe thirty <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. But you just need to enjoy the process so that 100%. everything else is satisfying. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like that's what people don't see there. I think now like I said thanks to social media, you know, you start to realize like when I saw it I was like, damn because I also I wake up pretty early every day as well. Um and I saw I was like, Jesus. This guy posted a story <laughs> one hour ago. It's like, yo. Yeah. Uh, what am I doing? I'm not working hard enough. Yeah. I need to wake up earlier. No, so course. that is that is crazy and yeah. And for me the biggest thing is that whole thing of you 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 technically your own boss and you have yeah. to create your own salary. You have and the pressures on you you yeah not Simple. your manager or this everyone no. around you is there to help you meet your your deadline your or deadline whatever. and all that yeah. stuff but without you none of that is going to happen no without you you won't get that commission or you won't yeah. get that at sold or you know because yeah. you need to be there yeah 100% you know? and also just yeah. like ideas you know if you get an idea You kind of have to execute now. Yes, you have to get in there and get it in. done. And sometimes the idea will come at 3 a.m. And <laughs> I'm going to wake up and go to the studio. And do it, yeah. You know, or I'll wake up and, you know. Yeah, at least sketch create, something out. Or, sketch it out. Yeah. You know, process it, do a study, do a couple of studies so that when I get to the studio, I've... You prepare to the other side. Yeah. See, yeah. there's preparation in things, guys. Not just being an artist. Like, yeah, yeah let's no, do it's this. Hard. It's hard. Um, and then what was the other one? The other one was. It was about what issues. Um, I forgot. It was misconceptions, and then 
Like you could say anything that you've kind of like learned. Yeah. That was like a really the, powerful message and like something that st- stuck with you to this day. The biggest thing I learned is that as an artist, for you to grow, to get to the level of the people you aspire to be in, most of the time, and this is my opinion, you need to do it within the industry. A lot of mm. people think that being an artist or a true artist, yeah, I'm self-made, I do it on my own, I'll open my own gallery, I'll do this, I'll do that. And they, they want to change the industry and the system from outside. And not also, happening. It's yeah. not going to happen. It's not happening. It's no, not going to happen. If you are a painter and you get into the industry of art and you say, fuck galleries, fuck these curators, I'm going to do it myself and whatever, your journey is going to end up there mm. most of the time. Yeah. Selling your work doesn't mean industry growth or artistic yeah, yeah. growth. 100%. Selling yeah. art. You can sell your artwork for 500K. That doesn't mean you are, have, you are growing. As In the artist. industry, yeah. Because it's also bigger than just selling a painting. It is far bigger than selling a painting. And it's a whole... Being an artist is so amazing because it's a career you can have for the rest of your life. Mm. And that's what you need to build. Mm. And the misconception is that when we get in as younger people, yeah, we're going to disrupt. I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to, you know. I'm going to take over the industry. Yeah. This is my industry. <laughs> yeah. And you are only taking over your own corner. Yeah. Not in the industry. Yeah. So it's important to put your head down, learn from the best, mm. get robbed, get cheated, get yeah. abused, you know, get used, mm. but learn yeah. and grow and be better and know that I can make better decisions for myself when I get another opportunity. Yeah. That's how we grow. I've gone through that. Yeah, you I know, can I'm imagine. I'm going through that. Mm, I can imagine, you know, yeah. But I keep my eye on the price. Yeah. You have an end goal. I've got an end goal, mm. you know, and I want to participate and contribute in the industry and grow in the industry. So I can't say fuck the industry. No, you can't. The best fuck the industry is to grow within the industry and bring the change within. Yeah. That's the best way. And I that's can. actually, I think, the only way you'll actually bring about change. Yeah. Is once you're in the industry and whatever, whatever you don't like whatever elements you don't like of the industry, you can then try to change that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But trying to change the whole thing from day one. Because now in our generation, we are um, social media Mm, activists. Cancelling. Cancel everyone. This, that, (laughs) this, that. From the comfort of your seat and behind your your, your phone. Yeah. No, stand up and do something. Don't, Don't just talk. Yeah. You know, it's easy to criticize other people when you un- when you don't have to do the work. Hundred percent. It's always like that, though. You know, yeah. it's easy to say, "Ah, oh, but justice, you had it so yeah. easy." Yeah. Or you, you were not there when I was waking exactly. up at four a.m. You weren't there when you like the months where you didn't sell a piece or you yes. didn't do this. You weren't you there. Were not there. And Everybody social media just shows the highlights. Exactly. You'll see me on holiday and this, this. You don't know who paid for that holiday. Exactly. Maybe I didn't. Yeah. Maybe I'm just looking cool. At night, I'm crying. Exactly. That's you know? the thing. So we'd never show the real side. So yeah, those are the things that I learned that the growth you are looking for is within the industry. Within the, industry. the change you want to bring, you can only bring it from within. Mm. Yeah, so like for, from my perspective and, and my biggest like thing that just drives me crazy, and I like I said, I understand the model, mm. Um but this thing of galleries taking 50%, it's like, <laughs> guys, like, you know what? That I, hits me deep, like, from you, <laughs> for you as a person. I'm like, how is it? I understand you've got to, like, rent and this, but, like, I'll, I'll this man's you, creating it, and you, now you're taking half of it. Like, no, I'll that, tell you, I've got it hurts me. Maybe I, I need to learn. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah, I need to learn. And I'll give you and what I, I've I can, learned. Yeah. Because I'm still learning. Yeah. That's what I used to think that, no, oh, man, can, can we kiss? Yeah, of course. Yeah, fuck, yeah. fuck, 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 whatever. Fuck, fuck galleries, <laughs> fuck. 
50%, you know, I, that's what I used to think. But mm. that thought process was of a person that's not within the industry and understanding how things work. Yeah. I'm privy now to seeing how things work. Yeah. And obviously there are different models within the industry of commission to gallery and all of that. Okay. First of all, you know, maybe I'll speak for me. The markup galleries put up is on top of what I want. It's not going uh, into what I'm charging. Okay. See, I'm learning, guys. You know? So all the galleries that I saw it, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, sorry. So, yeah, sometimes, you know, the markup is on top of what okay. I want. Okay. And at the end of the day, I'll get what, what you my want. value is. Okay. Right? That's, that's good and to know, at least. Yeah. That's good to know. And sometimes... Yes, value is determined by demand and galleries mm. and where your works are and all of that. And galleries are there to make your life simple. Galleries are there to bridge the gap between yeah. you and collectors that you can't get to as an individual, as I said earlier. Mm. If what good is my work sitting in my studio and I'm saying, yeah, I want... 500k and it's been sitting there for oh, five months. years and i'm mm. building this work and more and more and yes value is value yes but if i meet a gallery and a curator that really loves and believes in my work and they feel that they've got an audience for my work so be it yeah so yeah, be it because exactly. i need to live i need yeah. to pay my bond i need to pay my studio i everything. need to buy materials you know you need to do everything so even the artists that get the markup is inside what they need. At the end of the day, the value they get is you are getting opportunity to show your work within the industry and that gives you as an artist more value, more credit. Uh, it's growing your CV. Mm. It's growing your audience. That's also, now you know? that you said that, that CV part is also something I've been forgetting about. It's, yeah. like, it's also about saying... I've had my sh my work MoMA. showed at MoMA. Or uh, you yeah. imagine MoMA, Lord, that would be insane. You know, and galleries will put you in front of those opportunities yeah. or curators will put you in front of those opportunities. And these institutions have employees that are mm. human, like you and yeah, I. That they also have to live. Pay, mm. You know, and they are there to make your my life easy. Yeah. To go fight and market my work. Yeah. And so you can focus on creating on, more on work. Being creative. Mm. You know, they are there to make sure that my exhibition is packaged well. Mm. There's there, there are systems. I mean, if they are saying if my work is fifty K, that's what I want. And they say, Okay, we're gonna put a hundred K because they believe that the the work's value can hold that hundred K mm. and the collectors will pay that hundred K, right? The 50k that's going to them is not just yeah in the pocket money. yeah mm. it, you know because first of all that's the obvious one there is rent yeah right overheads overheads the overheads that. are the stuff yeah that that's are there running and fighting to make your exhibition work mm. you know the the privilege they are opening you up to to show yeah. your work to these collectors mm. you know then they're gonna you know some yeah i mean it's that there's there's yeah, so yeah. much there's so much yeah. I and mean, when i look at bigger institutions we've got amazing galleries here the big yeah, ones we you do. Know? they've got a lot of stuff yeah you know they've got it and they have to the upkeep is not cheap mm. you know and definitely i get it at the end of the day they also want to pay their their staffs right. competitive salaries you know because let's face it we People all want to live learn. well, yeah. you know, and it's, it's the same thing that I always say to everyone. It's like, if you make the right decisions for the business, mm. you'll get rewarded. Y y but exactly. if you're not going to make if the right decisions, happy, you, you get know, the that's reward. the thing. That's so, the thing. Yeah. So it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I guess I was also looking at it from my side in kind of a, a one-dimensional yeah. way, almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'm with you. I was like that yeah. until I understood that there's so much more to it than just what I thought. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's also like it's important to, like I said, I'm learning right now. 
Yeah. You know? So yeah. if I didn't have this conversation, I would have had still had that mindset where, yeah. you know, I'm going to go close down this gallery. <laughs> Means yeah. <I'm>, no. Like, <laughs> imagine <laughs> work with them. <laughs> when you're doing a show and you've got maybe 10 pieces, those pieces need to be archived and photographed. Mm. They need to be framed. Sometimes some deals come with framing your work. You know, maybe you, you know, they need to archive that. They're going to make booklets. You know, yeah, there's yeah. going to be wine running on your show. Yeah. There's going to be a speaker. Yeah. Yeah, there's like, there's a lot to there's it. There's a lot. They have to put a production together, basically. Yeah, it's a yeah. whole production together. There's a writer that needs to, they need to get your, they need to market your work. They need to get mm. it to these um, journalists. They need to put it in magazines. It's a lot. It I'm money. not saying they don't make money. Of from, course they do. They do. Of course they do. But it's well worth it mm. because you're going to make money too. Or if it's Is not it? money, you've got Exposure. an accolade. Mm. You've got something for your CV that, oh, I showed here mm. with these people. You know? Yeah. No, that's it's it's good that uh, that I'm also learning here. So but yeah, that's, that's always learning. cool. Uh, thank you for that. Sure. Uh, okay, cool. Now, with the way that the art world is kind of moving, we... And this, this this kills me because, I mean, I'm looking at that piece right now and yeah, yeah. it's yeah. really cool to look at that, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. With the whole NFT thing, how do you feel about it and would you create an NFT? So, to be honest, I'm not informed enough to participate yet. Yeah. You know, I think there is, the future is now. Mm. The future is right. Oh, here. yeah. And... I uh, just haven't had the time, maybe even the interest to learn it for myself and understand it so that I can participate. Yeah. Uh, I'm a bit old school, so I've, I always feel like, hey, man, I live here. I'm here. Mm. I want my art to be Ooh, That's tangible. me as well, dude. You know, I, I can't see as well. for myself buying an artwork that is digital. What it's am I going to do? Same. It's not the it's same. It's not the so, same. Not to say I'm not going to participate. Uh, when I get to a point where I understand it yeah. and it makes sense and I'm ready, I will. But at yeah. the moment, I don't yeah. I don't connect with it because I don't understand it. Yeah. Now, for me also, like, I, I understand it, yeah. not entirely. Mm. Um, I understand that it's, you know, so rare and you keep it on the blockchain and this, it's one yeah. of one. And, like, I can understand it and because that's what everybody is kind of it's just almost the same as collecting uh, the artist proof yeah yeah you know, yeah, that yeah. original work yeah, of yours yeah, yeah. you know that's what everybody every art collector wants one, they want the that one proof. of one yeah yeah you know that one so yeah. i understand it from that point but for me it goes back to what you said that t i mean come yeah. on look at that yeah. man no, you know yeah. shout out african ginger shout out. like looking at that yeah, and actually beautiful. being able to go there and just Goosebumps. I got goosebumps. You know, that, that Imagine for me is cool. That as an NFT. It wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't be the same. Yeah, I'm not ready. So I'm not going to bash it, but I'm just, I'm not ready yeah. for NFT. Don't get me wrong. I'm not bashing it. Yeah. I, I, I appreciate the NFT. And some of the NFTs that people create are crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. They're really, really cool. I should do a deep dive on it to try to understand it. Yeah. yeah, I think you should. It's, yeah. a, it's also, it comes. Stuff if you've got yeah, I will. I no, definitely. Really yeah, watch. definitely. I'll definitely send you some stuff. Um, and I think it's also with the way we're moving forward. Let's be honest. Yeah, it, it is the future, yeah. and as an artist, you kind of have to adapt to it. Yeah, because it's another form of income as well. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. if you can be that way, yeah, I get you. Yeah, if you can be selling uh, NFTs for a certain amount of Ethereum, or, yeah. or whatever, you know, there you're building up a, a whole other portfolio of like yeah. investment, if you want to call it yeah. that. So. Yeah. Didn't your brother create one? Yeah, he does. He's in there. Oh, deep. damn. But my brother is like that. You know, he is. Yeah, he's like, I'm on it and I'm on it yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I dig that guy, man. He's so future thinking. He's unstoppable. Yeah. It's like, ah, I'm in there. Yeah, I he is very lot. driven, like the one. Yeah. I haven't even engaged with him like a lot, but I have yeah. like, but he is like, nah, he's, he's on it. He's in there, you know. <laughs> Which so, is yeah. good. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you could also just, why don't you guys do a collab? We are. We are working yeah. on something. We're going on a residency together to work on a um yeah, a show together. NFT, there's there's the time. Yeah. There's the time. I don't know. It's it's a show for a museum. So Okay. 
Uh, I don't know if they are yeah. NFT ready or whatever, but we'll ask. But I, I don't know. He also works with a company called The Tree, I think. Okay. They do NFTs. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'll ask. I'll ask if yeah, you there should is do appetite it. for both of us. And I think maybe it'll be they cool. can help me understand it then. Yeah, I think it'll be cool. I think yeah. it'll be cool putting some of your tangible art into an F- NFT. Yeah, I also dope. have a friend um, who is in that stuff in, in Terence Maluleke. He's deep in it. Oh, I yes, just need yeah. to find time with him and ask him how it works. Yeah, that, it's like you said, you have to grow within the industry. So yeah. here it is. Yeah. The NFT is going to, you have to <laughs> grow within. I need within. to do what I yeah. Say. <laughs> um, yeah. In terms, like you just mentioned Terence now, who is your like favorite artist, whether it's, South African or local. Mm. I mean, wow, listen to me, South African or oh, local. Look. <laughs> <laughs> uh, same thing. Uh, South African or international. Uh, hey, man. South African artists are amazing. And Tell me about it. Across the board, it. you know. Yeah, literally. We've got From incredible. musicians yeah, to yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've got painters. incredible musicians. I'll just name a few. I definitely am super inspired and it sounds biased. By my brother, he's amazing. I I love his point of view and just him as a person and his like how he mm. does his stuff. He, as an artist, he's amazing. You know, again, I'm sounding biased, but my friends too. Yeah, it's incredible, so fresh, man. It's and we a, grew up together. You can't really say you're biased because it's yeah. it's it's an honest opinion. And now yeah. that I think about it, like I also like both those artists as well. Yeah. So. I get why you're saying you're sounding biased, yeah. but you're not. They are very talented artists. And I'm so blessed to to share a studio with them, you know, and yeah. they're my brothers and we grew up together and you inspire each other. They're so amazing. Yeah. That and is really cool. For me, that's also mm. like especially nowadays there's this like culture of fuck the other person, like I don't want him to win. Like hey, man, and, that, and that, that for me breaks my heart because I've always been the type of person like if I can help mm. you with something. I will. I'll go above and beyond and I'll try my best to help you because at the end of the day, mm. if, for example, let's just use me and you, yeah. right, for example, mm. if you grow from that mm. and you move forward in your life or in any aspect, whatever it is, mm. that's going to benefit you, but in turn, that will also benefit ben- you. Yeah, it benefits all of us as a culture yeah. and as a people, you know. Yeah. But I think, I think that mentality feels like it's innate in humanity because oh, yeah, when yeah. I think about it, the idea of, of, of jealousy and not being happy for other people and all of that, when I felt it inside of me, it's not something that I was taught. Mm. Or I was told that yeah. when I'm seeing my peer getting better grades than me, I'm jealous and I'm not happy for them. You know, I wasn't taught that. Yeah. You know, maybe it's a systematic thing, but as I grew, it is a learned thing. Is it? Maybe it, it is. is I, I think it is a learned aware thing. That mm. you know, my environment exposed me to learning jealousy. You know, mm. but I'm lucky that as I grew, I realized that this doesn't serve me in any way. How can I not be happy for another person? Because they win. First of all doesn't take anything away from me you know and i see it in our industry uh you know you feel a lot of resistance and a lot of pushback from other artists from people and you hear chirps and all of that stuff and you know when i see that or i experience that or i feel that i just feel sad for them because Mm. you're taking so much time hating on another person when you could just be putting that energy in your own stuff, mm. you know, yeah. I mean... It and learn. And I've learn. always, like, I have a friend actually doing his episode tomorrow. Oh. Uh, the guy we're talking about, um, the collectibles company and yes, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He's made, like, a pretty successful business, well, very successful business out of that. Yeah. And it's like I said to him the other day, we were sitting with his dad and everyone, I, was, I said to him the other day, I was like, you know, it would, it would make no sense for me to come here and be jealous of what you created. I see it in a way, I need to pick your brain and I need to learn from you because you've created this. You know, you know what's so amazing? If you feel jealousy or if you feel like you want something that someone has, it just highlights that 
that's something that you wish for yourself. Yeah. And maybe just do the work yeah. to get to where that person is. Yeah. Or ask them. Ask them. Yeah, that's ask it. Them. Ask them. If like, they don't have the time to I tell help? you. Can I learn from you? You can just observe from a distance yeah. what steps they took and put that in your own journey 100%. to get there. You know, But investing your time hating on other people. Man. It's a waste of time. It's the, you're actually it's not investing time. your time. Yeah. You're wasting your time. I've always said, like, for me, it's, I, I'd much rather learn from that person. Yeah. You know, like, if I wanted to become a better photographer or whatever, yeah. I, instead of looking at the person that, you technically, because you look up to that person. Yeah, if you're jealous, course. you look yeah, up to yeah. that person. Rather, instead of like, approaching it from a negative perspective, flip it. Flip it and be positive. Be like, hey, listen, could you teach me something, you know, could you do this? It's mm. like you said, if the person says no, then, okay, cool. Okay, cool. Keep watching, what keep check, doing. see how they do, like, okay, cool, that's, then one day, it might happen, where they say, okay, damn, I've seen you've been working well, on this for a year. Success is for everyone. It's not for a chosen few, it's for 100%. everyone. You just need to choose and identify what you want and work towards it and don't be entitled to the success immediately. Yeah. Just be on your journey. Enjoy that. You'll get there. Yeah. And you'll get to your version 100%. of success, you know? 100%. Yeah. That's so, so true. It is. It's like you said, it's a journey as well. It's, it's not, journey. you can't see your work as an aspiring artist and be like, I want that now. No. No, man. because you that's can't. been years of work. Yeah. <laughs> I look at my peers. There are so many incredible artists in Johannesburg. Mm. They've been in their journey for far longer than I have. Yeah. And in their journey, they're far ahead than I am. Yeah, I can't look at that and be jealous and not be happy for that person because they put in the time. Exactly. I'm two years in as a painter or a year and a half as a painter. I need to be appreciative of my journey and focus on that, celebrate other people's win, yeah. learn from them. Yeah, You know. Definitely, dude. That's all we can That's do. It. Yeah, yeah, because you've just started your journey. So yeah, I mean that's hundred percent. If I'm being jealous of other people's uh, wins, when am I spending time with mine? Exactly. And, and what would you myself. want when you start winning? Not other people to be jealous. Yes. You'd want people to be happy for you because yeah, exactly. you've also taken your time. It's it's always like that, but I think that's just society as well. Yeah. Society is kind of just push towards that unfortunately yeah. but it is what it is you know it, it, that's just yeah. the way life is going to be it's yeah. been like that for many many years has, but man. that's not much we can change about that yeah. but um let's move on this was a question we actually spoke about this you asked me this earlier yeah, yeah, this is yeah. very this is not about art guys so <laughs> so uh you asked me and i'm not planning on doing this anytime soon i wish i could yeah. but you asked me what lamborghini <laughs> would I buy? Um, and then I thought to myself instantly, I was like, what a hard question. Like, there's so many nice ones. Um, but I, I don't want to be the type of person that's going to say I'd go for like the classic one because mm. even though I'd love to, like the Lamborghini Countach would be so cool. But yeah. I probably, it would be such a mission to drive that thing. It probably doesn't have power steering. My so I say at this present time, I don't want to say this, but it's the one that kind of makes the most sense. Probably the Eurus. Eurus, yeah, yeah. it's kick ass. That hey, it's yeah, beautiful. Dude. And there's space. Yeah, it's still fast. Yeah, looks like you said it's beautiful. Yeah, it's 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 all in one. Lambo is what would amazing, you buy? Man. You know what? I I grew up with cars, man. I, cars are my huge passion. You know, mm. I love cars. So if what would I buy from a, a Lamborghini? Mm. In the, I would, I would buy an Urus, yeah. Because I'm an off-road kind of guy, you know. Yeah. Are I you going to take Urus that Urus off-road though? Definitely. I'm not precious. Damn. I'm not precious. <laughs> but I'd take it if I if if I have one. Yeah. I'm going into the windows <laughs> with that thing. Yo, please. I crack everything on top. <laughs> Phone Go. me on that day. I just want to record <laughs> it. Like, that's all. I I'll bring the drone. me with money to get on because I'm going to. That's why I said phone me. We're yeah, planting we'll, we'll the seed. It's together. happening. It's, <laughs> it's happening. You're going to get it. I've always, I've always believed in it as well. Like, yeah. I've always said, like, you've, you've, you've got to get it. 
You know, yeah, when you plant I mean, it in your head, like you're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then yeah. it's gonna happen. So all I want to do on that day, yeah. I just want to bring my drone and I and just want to record it. Thing. That's all. <laughs> you can go for it, Bundus and all. Good luck. <laughs> I hope you don't scratch your paint because, uh, bro, I don't mind. It's just paint. <laughs> you that bowl <ball> afterwards. <laughs> I won't get it repainted. I'll just leave it as is. Unless you know, unless it scratches and it gets to the metal, then yeah. there's gonna be rust. Then yeah. I, I'll sort it out. But yeah, if it's like a small scratch, leave it. Yeah, well, I, I guess so. Mind, At the end of the day, mind. it is. It is just an. It's an object. You know? Yeah, it's, it's not like I mean, it's an object I love, of for course, sure, and I respect. Yeah. But it's an off-road car. I wanna go into. Yeah, it must, and it's even Actually. got like an off-road mode, hey? Yeah, you know that? It does, like, yeah. So I, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to. I'd be so scared. I'd do it. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a, a super fancy car, but I take it everywhere, man. Everywhere I go. That's hard. good, though. Like, yeah, I, I've seen even fresh. on like on Instagram and stuff, you yeah. definitely put your car to work. Yeah, and it's, it's still a very nice car. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Well, there we go, guys. <laughs> so I'd buy a Eurus. <laughs> Justice would buy a Eurus. I mean, come I on. I know it's my uh, brother Stu would get a, a Kuntash probably. Stu, would you buy a Kuntash? You're a vintage kind of car. So you're one of those guys. <laughs> How are you going to reverse park that thing? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Parallel <laughs> park. <laughs> taking shots at us now. Yo, this is like, <laughs> this is hectic. Um, okay, so we kind of, we, we're kind of at the end, but yeah. the only reason we're, we're kind of at the end is because today our burgers didn't come before yeah. we were going to be at the end. Um, so what we'll do is we'll maybe like afterwards just record like a short little thing yeah. and leave you guys with the burger review. No problem. Um, but usually we'd review, you guys know, it's uh, yeah. we review the burger. Um, but yeah, like once again, I can, I really can't thank you enough for, for this and for today. Uh, it's, it's like how you could say art and painting is like your passion and stuff like that. Yeah. Once again, I've said this so many times, like doing this type of stuff and art to be dead honest. Like I'm not a, like I don't paint or anything, but it's just something about it. Um, I think you're an artist, bro. Being an artist doesn't mean you have to create tangible things. True. True. Yeah. You know, you, true. I think you are. We're all artists. I think you Some are. Way. And I'm not being <laughs> humble guy. You are an artist, bro. This is art. Yeah, that's also true. That's this also is it art. is true. Conversation is art. Creating a space that you have is art. It's not easy. Yeah, that's also true. Not and I've always been into it. A conversation like mm. this and drive it and build it up the way you have. Mm, true. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I did <Art>. something. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. We're gonna have. Uh, we're just in time. Yeah, we're just yeah, in yeah. time. We're gonna have the burger now. Uh, we got burgers from I think it was Lexi's, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. Um, yeah, is it vegetarian or vegan? Yeah, vegan, vegetarian, yeah, yeah. Justice no, is I serious, guys. <laughs> this man's gonna be on uh, what's, what's that ma magazine, <laughs> Men's Health, soon. He's gonna be rocking a six pack. No, my brother will be, <laughs> not me. But, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just vegetarian. I was vegetarian for like four years, then lockdown took that away from me because I got <laughs> stressed. But I'm gonna get back soon. Nice. Well, I mean, I was vegetarian for six months. <laughs> and <laughs> it was dead honest it was the best i ever felt yeah even yeah. mentally every, every, every single way all around, yeah. stomach wise Stronger. like healthier in general mentally yeah. so i'll take my hat off to you that is proper but yeah i mean guys thank you so much for tuning in justice once again thank you so much for having appreciate us it. really pleasure, like man. i appreciate this and yeah uh, one day we'll be on a on a episode two, hopefully. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely, bro. Definitely. Awesome. definitely. Thank you. Not hopefully. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank cool, you. Man. Thank awesome. You. Thanks, dude. Okay, guys. So, surprise. We're, we're back. We <laughs> we had a, a little bite of the burgers now. Um, and we just thought, you know, we might as well come back, give the, the proper review after we've eaten it. And, I mean floor's yours you can go for yeah, it you I start mean, we got we got do you have to mention where we got the burgers yeah we i mean we can yeah, yeah we got lexi's vegetarian burgers yeah um i think that's what i preferred yes yes um, yes and yeah man it was i really love vegetarian food that's not trying to be meat 
Hundred percent. So yeah. yeah, that burger was really tasty. Mm. I mean, saying a burger is almost misleading because you feel yeah. like there'll be a meat patty, but there wasn't a meat patty. It had uh, tofu. Tofu. Mm. Yeah, that is. I don't. It didn't look like it was fried. I don't know how they cooked it, and it had this beautiful sauce. It was really good. Like yeah. I'll be dead honest. Yeah. I was vegetarian for six months, yeah. and then I could say I maybe had like a really good burger from Hudson's that was vegetarian, but this by far. It was definitely the best. The tofu is like I said to you, yeah. biting into the tofu was like I was biting into like a marshmallow. Yeah. It was like <laughs> it was so soft, and and I've had tofu before where yeah, it's yeah. not nice. Like yeah, it's hard, and it's hard to get tofu wrong. Yeah, well, it's well, hard to get it right. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. get tofu right. right. Nah, yeah, yeah. Lexi's good yeah. job. You guys got it right. Yeah. So I'd say I'd say the burger for me. And it's it's relative because it's a vegetarian burger, yeah. but for what it is, I give it like a seven, maybe even like an eight out of ten. Yeah, yeah. I'd give it an eight. Yeah, uh, it's a very strong eight. That's going towards a nine because it's not trying to mimic anything meaty. Yeah, you know it. You know it's very much vegetarian. Beautiful um, taste, sauces, mm. great bun, everything yeah. beautifully packaged. Right as well. Um, packaging is secondary because the package is not the taste. It's mm. really tasty. So, but it also it's and the presentation was nice. I'll be honest. It looked great, really yeah. good, and it just yeah. came in like a box. So I can imagine what it looks like when you on a plate yeah, at yeah, the actual yeah. place. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was that was really good. Yeah, um, I loved it. Thank you for getting me back onto vegetarian food as well. I mean, yeah, I actually course. enjoyed it. I haven't had a vegetarian <laughs> meal in ages. So, yeah. yeah, that's the review, guys. So, once again, thank you for. Just tuning in. Thank you for taking time out of your day and watching this. So we do appreciate it. Um, please like, uh, subscribe as well. If I mean it's gonna take two seconds, just click, click, done, and leave a comment. Uh, maybe there's an artist you guys want on the podcast. Yeah. You never know. We could maybe try get them on. And yeah, just thank you once again, Justice. Like I said a million times, and I'll say it. Until the day I die, thank yeah. you so much for just taking the time out of your day and, no, and having this, this conversation. No, this yeah, definitely. Cool. Is, I appreciate you. I appreciate your point of view. Like your podcast. So. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we're, we're trying. Baby steps. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is my journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one Technically one year into the journey. So yeah. hopefully in five years time we can be can sitting here and be like, damn. Yeah. Joe Rogan was on your podcast, Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <It'll> <laughs> Doubt <get much> that. <laughs> hey, man, who knows? Yeah. But yeah, thank you. I really do appreciate it. This was really fun. And yeah, thank you. Thank awesome. You, cool.